What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we're going to talk about all of our list changes, so delistings, retirees, and stuff like that. Let's get into it. Just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. They're all Swoop Luke. They're in the bio, uh, the, not the bio, the information down below. Make sure you check that out. If you are a new super, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you are a returning super, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me. Let's get into it. So as always, at the end of the season, you bring in some new players maybe. If you're lucky, you bring in some draft picks, you bring in some draft kids. But like the circle of life, like the circle of football life, you have to get rid of uh, some players. You have to say goodbye to some players. Uh, and Collingwood were no exception this season. So before the trade period and the draft period and all this off-season stuff started happening, we knew of three players that were already leaving us. Chris Mayne, Levi Greenwood, and Anton Tohill. Chris Mayne played 76 games for Collingwood um, after coming from Fremantle in 2017 on one of, you know... Those contracts um, uh, and and the recruits that were just like one, it was like why are we why are we sort of doing this? And um, yes, he he could be a good player, but you know for that amount of money and there was all these things circling around. And then he didn't play any football in twenty seventeen, or not any football, but he struggled to get into um, the first team. Was playing twos, but you know despite it all. And then you know there was rumors that Collingwood were trying to offload him back to Fremantle at the end of twenty seventeen. He stuck, stuck through it, reinvented himself in 2018, nearly became a uh, premiership player. We won't get into that too much. And then he became the lifeline of Collingwood, the blood of Collingwood. Chris Mayne, by the end of his career, bled black and white. And he retired. He's gone back to um, WA with his family and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, he just bled black and white. He loved the club so much. And, you know, it says a lot about his character to come from that shambolic 2017 let's not beat around the bush to where he was um in that uh, last game that he played for the pies so you know round of applause to um chris main and what he's been able to achieve and uh just probably he looks like the nicest bloke you'll, you'll ever meet so um you know hats off to you matey so at the end of 2014 levi greenwood joined collingwood with the likes of travis varco jack crisp pick five, which was, um, ended up being to uh, in, in one of our, you know, biggest, um, that end of 2014 trade draft period was a really, really good time for us. And, um, Levi Greenwood ended up playing 86 games with the Pies, kicking 31 or so goals. Um, and he's just a warrior. Uh, Greeny was just a warrior and look, he could have played on, I, I feel for another one or two years. Um, but we know that with the concussion and, you know, we have to take that super serious and stuff like that. He hadn't played since round four or five this season uh, against West Coast. And yeah, just like, it's so sad because Greenwood was just an absolute wrecking ball and someone that, you know, like Tay Adams, you would get behind um, if you were in a, a war and, and stuff like that. So, you know, Greenwood, uh, Tammy Cruz may empower to him. Uh, I hope he, he starts feeling better. Uh, towards the end of the season, he was staying with the Pies, like in a coaching sort of capacity. I'm not too sure what's going on with that now, but um, yeah, Greenwood, an absolute beast uh, at North and at, at the Pies, so uh, we say goodbye to him through retirement. The last guy that we knew of was Anton Tohill. Played only a handful of games, Category B rookie from the, the uh, Irish land. Wow, why did I say Irish land? <laughs> from Ireland? Um, God damn. And uh, so he came He came across. He got his chance this season. Took it with two hands. And, and he did okay. You know, the first the first game that he played, a bit raw, uh, deer, in, deer in sort of headlights. But, you know, it's a huge step up from the VFL to the AFL. And I thought he could have been another bit of a project player. Look, maybe not a 250 game player. But I thought he could... He, he showed a little bit to be that sort of next generation um Halfback, maybe on the on the wing, um, that sort of mix. But he's gone back to Ireland to be 
uh, a doctor, which is just absolutely huge. Like, apparently it was like a, a, a really hard school to get into and stuff like that. So, Anton Zohill, that is absolutely amazing, dude. Um, you're literally going to be saving lives. So, that is... So, kudos to you, brother. So, the next retiree is Josh Thomas. Now, you probably don't know this because um, it was a bit of a shock to me. Josh Thomas was on the list in 2010. So, look, he didn't play any games in 2010, but he was on the list in 2010. He didn't play his first game until, I think, 2013 or 2014, just battling a bunch of um, foot injuries and stuff, and could have been career-threatening foot injuries. Started playing, four pockets, stuff like that. Got banned for the two years with all the drugs and stuff like that. Not all the drugs, but with the drug uh, issues, stuff like that. So, he went away for two years, couldn't play any sort of football. He comes back, and in 2018, he was such an integral part of the Pies getting to that grand final, part of the Swoop squad with um, Steve-O, Will Hoskin Elliott. 2019, he had a good year as well. 2020, 2021, kind of slowed down a little bit, change of role. What I liked about Josh Thomas is this year, he pretty much played every single game except for like one or two because of, of injury. What I liked about Josh Thomas this year was, yes, yeah, okay, he was a whipping boy, all right? Because he wasn't putting numbers up like he was in 2018, 2019. He played a new role. He was really good at that sort of high forward pressure role, uh, getting the ball into the 450. He just wasn't there. Because we, we had the new kids coming through. We had um, Henry was there. Jamie Elliott was back. You know, Jordan Ngoi, uh there as well. Because you got to think that in 2018, Jamie Elliott wasn't wasn't playing. So, Will Hoskin Elliott and Josh Thomas and Stevenson, to an extent, were uh, filling that sort of void of, of um, Elliott. So, Josh Thomas plays a little bit up the ground, pressure forward. And it's things that don't get stats. So, if you looked at his stats, oh, okay, he had 12 possessions. But... He was ranked number one in uh, pressure. So it's sort of things like that where they're not necessarily stats, but he still had a good year. And yeah, look, after 10 or so years with the club, he leaves with his head held high. Could have been a premiership player like all, most of these guys could have. But Josh Thomas, look, and, and, and I've ripped into him a couple of times as well. Um, that's just natural when you when you are, are a fan of, of football and, and Collingwood. You're, you're very harsh on, on players and stuff like that. But, you know, so, sort of like Chris Main, to, to go away and then come back after two years and get to a higher level, nearly a grand final or nearly a premiership, says a lot about Josh Thomas's character. And whatever he puts his mind to uh, next, he's just going to absolutely smash it. So that's who retired on their own whim. Now, the D-listings. We said goodbye to Braden Sire, Jay Rantel, and Isaac Chubb. Braden Sire could have been absolutely anything. Braden Sire was our first pick in the 2015 draft. Uh, took on that 35 jumper. After that, he was handed Dane Swan's jumper, uh, the number 36, obviously. At the end of 2017, he started playing a bit of senior games. Then in 2018 was when he really broke onto the scene, solidifying himself in the team when Adam Trelaw uh, did those, remember those two hamstring injuries uh, against, I think it was Carlton that day. Uh, really solidified himself in the team as that hard-bodied midfielder, that in-and-under guy. Um, he just had a ripping 2018 season. And then it didn't all come crashing down, but he struggled to gain his spot back into the team. In saying that, he did struggle a lot with injuries, only getting um, 28 games with the club. But how I look at it is that, look, I'm not going to comment on like any sort of what, uh, you know, making assumptions on if he's taking it seriously or not. That doesn't really bother me. But if in a 2021 Collingwood side that is struggling, you know, without Adam Trouble, Rupert Wills isn't there to take his spot anymore. Taylor Adams is out for an extended period of time. Scott Penelbury is out. If you can't make it into that team that they're playing youngsters ahead of you and you're down the pecking order, you know, I guess that does ultimately say a lot. And, um, you know, I guess as harsh as that sounds. But uh, Braden Sawyer, yeah, he could he could be anything. He could have been anything. And I hope that he does get another chance at a club where he really, you know, pulls his head in and um, absolutely smashes it because he can be that big-bodied bull of a midfielder and, and I would love to see him thrive at another club just as long as it's not against us so bear 
thanks for the memories, mate. But um, hopefully you, you get another opportunity and smash it. Another kid that surprised me was Jay Rantau. Look, Jay got his opportunity this season. Uh, he was in the same draft as Rusko and Bianco, who are compl- uh, playing consistently now. Jay had an inconsistent two seasons at the club. COVID affected seasons in regards to VFL and stuff like that. It seems like Bianca and Rusko were ready-made footballers and they could thrive off little sort of game time and then come in. Like even Bianco came in, I think he missed all of 2020 because of an injury or something like that. Um, But with Jay, I think maybe he should have got another year. Uh just to sort of prove himself, but ultimately, it's it, football is cutthroat, lists are cutthroat, maybe he gets rookied somewhere else, but um, when you've got uh, Finlay McRae, Caleb Poulter, you know, Bianco to an extent, um, and a bunch of other youngsters all ahead of you, you know, but he did show signs of a tagger against Essendon when he kept Parrish to, like, no disposals pretty much, so he did show glimpses, but I guess just not enough. The last guy is Isaac Chug, who we delisted. He's a rookie, uh, plays off the halfback line, but we've said that uh, we're going to, going to re-rookie him. You just have to, you know, you're like, oh, but why do you do this sort of thing? You have to have um, as many draft picks as you have, that's how many list spots that you need open. So you can't have three list spots open and then, 10 draft picks, uh, 10 draft picks. So you kind of have to uh, balance it out with um, with that. So I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what's happened. We'll re-rookie um, Isaac Chug. And of course, Max Lynch goes for further opportunity uh, to Hawthorne as they're, you would think they're number one, on, no, they're not number one, but they're number two um, Ruckman, get more game time, but I talked about that in a video previously. Anyway, Supers, this has just been my recap on who left, you know, saying goodbye and stuff like that. It's always sad. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Who do, who would you give to, if you had any of those players come back, who would you give another one-year contract to? Even the retired players, just, just a little bit of fun. Who would you give another one-year contract to? Who are you sad to see go? And um, do you think we got the delistings and retiring retirees? Right. Let me know down below. But... Until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your friends, and until next time, double shakers, I'll see you later.